demo of the scatter platter if you're working at home. Um, and I wanted to do it without. Oh, there's my glass. <laughs> wanted to give you a demo of the scatter platter without a mask on. So here is the back room of storage room of the uh, the art room. So welcome to behind the curtain. <laughs> so the first thing I wanted to talk to you guys about um, when working on your scatter platters, take a look at that rubric. So I'm going to share my screen. We'll head on over to the OneNote for this class. Um, that is not what I wanted to show you. That is my Teams. Let's try this one more time. Sorry, I have a lot of windows open. OK, so we'll head on over to OneNote, Glass Fusing, period one. And this is under our uh, week five, um, but you can also find this information in the content library. If you go to content library, scatter platter. You have your scatter platter handout. This is actually the project guide from um, System 96 spe Spectrum Glass um, on how to create this project, but you also have a scatter platter turn in instructions and rubric and that's what I want to take a look at here. So there's a spot for you to put a photo of your platter, a uh, spot for you to notate what color scheme you used. So that's important. Make sure you're you're working with a color scheme and if asked about it, you can go ahead and let me know what color scheme you used. And um, then here are the rubric items for this assignment. So the first part is that there are three layers. So when you're making a scatter platter, you'll use a clear base. You'll have one layer of nipped pieces, and then you'll have an additional layer on top for a total of three layers. So one of your layers is going to be that clear piece, um, and then you'll have little chunks on top of there. Um, there's a visible color scheme. So that means that you um, have some sort of scheme. We went over that with our color wheel um, and again with our photo assignment, so that shouldn't be new information for you. So if asked what color scheme are you using? Are you using complementary? Are you using monochromatic? Um, have that in mind when you're making your piece. Um, the assignment flows and has a balanced composition. So we haven't talked a lot about balance, but um, there is an article for this week and there's an activity for this week um, about balance in composition. Um, but be thinking about things like symmetry, like radial symmetry, bilateral symmetry, asymmetry. Are there repeating themes, colors, shapes, sizes, that kind of thing? And there's a reading about that um, if you have some questions. Um, but make sure that it's not, you know, a bunch of pieces on one side and very sparse on the other. Just looking for a real um, balance of, of elements in your piece. And then the student put a lot of effort and thought into the assignment. So that means you're thinking about things like color scheme. It means that um, the pieces are relatively the same size, that they're nipped to small pieces. They're not these giant big pieces. Um, all of those things are um, going to show that you put a little effort in. So that's what A work looks like. I never like to go into the to the lower ends of the spectrum. So I expect everybody is capable and wants to get an A. So um, I'm going to assume that's what you're well, that's what you're going to do. So why even talk about the other stuff? Um, so next I will go over materials for this project. Um, if you're working from home, you should have got a bag with um, a variety of scrap glass. Um, some clear squares, those are your bases, and then some larger sheets. Uh, you're not going to want to use your larger sheets for this project. Um, this is a scrap glass piece, um, so you'll want to use your smaller bits and save the larger um, pieces for um, later projects. So I have my little bin here. Here's my, my scrap glass, and I'm going to tilt my camera here in a second so you can see that a little bit better. I've got my gloves, right? We always want to use uh, safety precautions. Um, I don't wear safety glasses because I have regular glasses, but if you don't wear glasses, um, you'll want to use your safety glasses. Um, I've got a clear base here and I have my nippers. So if you're working from home, you got a bag of tools. Um, you're going to have some pliers, breakers, cutters, and then a set of these. How you know they're nippers is they've got the two little eyeballs here and they're used for rough cuts. So it's not like we're going to be doing precision glass cutting with these. We're not making um, straight lines, although on smaller pieces you can make straightish lines, um, but you always are going to get a little bit of a rougher cut. These are really good for trimming around edges if you've already broken it, but you've got like a little angle. You can just kind of cut that off, but um, it's the first thing we want to use um, to teach you to use. 
Um, and so the first project is based around um, building that skill. And then the last thing we want is a little bit of Elmer's glue. And the inclination for people new to glass using is to use a ton of glue, um, but that's not great. Stuff tends to slide around if it's kind of floating on a bunch of glue and you can cause some clouding to your glass. Um, so, you know, use the glue so things don't move around, but use it sparingly. Um, so yeah, let's get to it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and nip. Whenever you're nipping, let me let me angle my camera down so you can see what I'm doing here. It's really important to nip into some sort of bin because pieces are going to go flying, right? And these are little glass shards, especially if you're at home. I'm sure your parents are not going to appreciate having little pieces of glass all over the place. So anytime you're cutting glass or breaking it, try to break it into something so it can catch the little little bits. So I've got my nippers. I'm going to probably point these. I'm going to point these down when I nip, but I got my little piece. I've got my little nippers pointing down and then I can just start cutting little bits. You remember from your rubric that you used small pieces of glass to create your scatter platter, right? So I don't want big herkin pieces of glass like this. I want to just cut off the little bits. And that's how we'll know that you are ready to move on to more complicated cutting and shaping is that you've really mastered this basic skill of just cutting the glass into small little pieces. So, and I could do more of that, but I just wanted to give you guys a basic idea of what it is to use your nippers. Um, you're gonna have some smaller pieces probably like this in your bag. Just go along there and go cut, 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 cut. And it doesn't have to be perfect. We're gonna kind of mosaic them together. So now I've got my bin with my different colors and I've got my clear base. I can start gluing pieces together. And how you're gonna wanna start this is you're gonna wanna start with a corner and edge because you wanna to try to get as close to along the edge as possible. So when I go back, and I'm gonna take off one of my gloves, I'm gonna take a little bit of glue and I like to do just some little dots, nothing too big, right? Kind of along this edge here. I'll find pieces that have a nice kind of square edge, do you see? And put those right along the edge. So I'm using some blues around the edge here. Try to find things that kind of fit together. Think about it like a giant jigsaw puzzle. Keep going. I'm going to actually kind of build this corner out a little bit so you can see what it's going to look like. So a little bit of glue and I'm not using very much glue at all. I definitely don't want it kind of squeezing out. So as much as possible, I'll just use a little dab. So I'm actually stealing some from the side to build out these little edges as well. I'll keep going along. I'm going to try to do this as quick as possible so you can see the next step. So, and what I would do is I'd fill this whole base layer with glass. Well, I'm not going to do that for this demonstration because I feel like you don't need to see it completed to know what you're working on here. I'll get it as close as possible. And I think I need a little squarish piece for there. Yeah, that looks good. So when I've got all these different blues, I used to call that an analogous color scheme or even monochromatic because it's got that color and then the lights and darks of the color. So, and I've got a really good start happening over here. Um, I could add some clear as well. That would look good or white or black. I'm kind of liking what I have. Okay, so here we are and you would go Continue on and fill in. I don't know if you're noticing what I got here, but there are some little holes. So this is why we're going to do our second layer. And your second layer doesn't have to be as complete as your first layer. Your second layer is more going to just be filling in places where you see little gaps. So because this is a rough cut um, where I place the glass, there's going to just be little spots that are 
missing glass. So I want to make sure that I've got kind of a nice full coverage on my clear base with my scattered pieces. So that's why I'm going to come back through and add pieces over the top. So to do that, once you've got your base layer going, so I'll take, I'm going to just put some dots where I know there's some holes. We'll come back through and stick some little blue ones on top, like so. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing and I'll hold it up to the camera so you can see it a little better. Anywhere where I can see these little cracks coming through just along my edge here, I like to have a nice clean edge. I'll just stick that on top like so. But you'll notice it's not as dense. Hopefully you can see that OK. It's not as dense as my first layer. It's really just to kind of fill in those cracks and get as much of an even coverage as possible so there's no clear showing through that all that color is going to come through. And then I'll continue on around my whole platter. And when I'm done, we'll have a nice scattery look and piece. So hopefully that explains any questions you have about your scatter platter. Um, if you want to see some examples, there are some examples. Leave in your one notes. Let's take a look. Um, there's a demo video that Derm did last semester as well. If you want to watch her nip some glass, but if you go to the scatter platter handout, that's going to give you an idea um, all the way through what this should look like, right? So we can see here there's their little bits they cut. Um, there's the first layer under picture number two. There's the second layer on number three, and they've got some clear glass on top to fill in those holes, but just to kind of make a nice um, thick piece. And then you'll fuse it and get. Scroll and scroll in here, and we can either fuse that into um, a lovely dish like they have here or even a little tea light. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully that all makes sense. Um, thanks for watching and I'm really looking forward to seeing your guys' projects. So get working. We'll check in on Monday. This uh, is going to be due uh, March 4th. That's uh, next Thursday. Um, that's the B group's last class. Um, if you need an extension, go ahead and let me know. I know that we're going to be building things at different times and you can always come to tutorial um, if you need to work on it. I'm not super, super firm with due dates, but I do want to give you an idea about when you need to be um, done with the project and moving on just to keep pace with the class. So if you need more time, let me know. Um, but other than that, uh, you know, happy, happy glass fusing <laughs> and we'll see you soon.